Hello and welcome to another FCAT special report, the COVID-19 pandemic, the local response. I'm Chris Collins, Director of Frontier Community Access Television. Once again, we are live in the Deerfield Town Hall talking about how Deerfield and South County are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm joined again, as always, in a nice distant state <laughs> from, with a variety of local officials who I'll introduce in a second. But first, I want to bring on Deerfield Police Chief John Pachorek and John, uh, just a little update on uh, where we are in terms of public safety response to the pandemic. Sure, so the police department is functioning at normal. We do not have any people out right now due to exposures on quarantine or isolation. Uh, statewide in review of the numbers, it looks like about 85 police officers have been diagnosed as a positive at this point. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, how many have recovered and how many are still at home under quarantine or in a hospital, but 85 have actually been diagnosed as a positive and 196 have uh, been put out on quarantine for exposures at this point. Deerfield Police is still uh, functioning as normal and please, if you need us, call us and make sure uh, you're checking on your neighbors and checking on anybody in need, but do so by phone, thanks. <laughs> What is new since our last update is that the governor has extended the statewide, um, it's not a shelter in place order, but a statewide uh, uh, ban on, on non-essential businesses until May 4th. And uh, we're gonna talk to Carolyn Shores Ness in a moment from the Deerfield Select Board about local responses. We also are joined on the panel by Zach Smith from South County EMS and Christine Johnson from the South County Senior Center to talk about some of the Senior Center's responses uh, in an effort to help local seniors. Let's go to Carolyn, though, and talk a little bit about uh, what we know now in terms of regional communications regarding this pandemic. Uh, well, as you know, Deerfield Select Board um, is also the Board of Health. So we've been busy and working all day um, and into the night sometimes um, doing surveillance and investigations. We only have at this point two confirmed cases in Deerfield, but we should please do, do not take these low numbers to mean that it's minimal in Deerfield. It's circulating. The thing is we have, what we are experiencing now is a two to three week lag from what has already happened for exposure. So it's really critical that people continue to stay home, continue physical distancing um, so that we can keep um, our community safe. Uh, what we've done in the last month since the beginning of February um, is try to figure out how we're going to communicate on the county and t local level. So through the third rendition of setup, um, which I think is finally going to work, we've set up um, our emergency dispensing site communications, Frontier, which is the four towns here in South County. Um, we set up a call in a uh, conference call in the morning on Monday morning. Then we figure out what the status is and situation report in each town, any problems we've encountered, and then um, and any issues that we need to be addressed. Tuesday is the uh, Department of Public Health call, and then the Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition, which I co-chair with Noreen Pease from the Board of Health in Shutesbury, um, meet. And then we decide on the messaging for the week, what is the crucial message to get out, and any issues that have come up on the um, emergency dispensing site um, level, which is there are eight in the, in the Franklin County. Uh, Greenfield and Montague have their own um, EDS uh, emergency dispensing site units, but then there are combined ones, Hallamont, um, Mohawk area, um, Shootsbury, Leverett, there's Pioneer. It's those, that level that comes up to the um, Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition level. So then um, we try to get the messaging out, try to address what's come up for the week. Then Thursday is the MEMA call, and in the morning we have individual emergency um, conference calls for our towns. So we have Deerfield emergency team meeting and calling in and discussing what, like the situation on personal protective equipment, PPE, that kind of thing. Um, any issues, uh, you know, with particular problems that Christina might encounter on the um, senior center level, whatever. That comes up, and if necessary, then we can meet again on Friday with MAPCO. So it seems to be working. We're able to um, 
keep the communication flow on a regular basis. And also what it is is we're waking up our emergency dispensing sites. We're going to, we in South County have really robust plans. Um, there is some indication on the state level that the states, which is a little bit different than what normally happens, but the states are pushing the feds to produce the flu, seasonal flu vaccine early. And the idea is to um, get the flu vaccine out and free up manufacturing cap uh, capacity for COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, there is some indication that they will give us another donation of a flu um, seasonal flu vaccine, which we haven't had for a few years. And the idea is to do a dry run. The problem is, is that um, how you roll out seasonal flu vaccine is probably not going to be, especially if it comes out in the summer, is not how it's going to roll out for COVID-19. If, if you remember in, in the swine flu H1N1, it was in very small batches. And if it comes out midwinter, we have to deal with weather. So we are reviewing all our plans, which we have five. We have from our big industrial D1 industrial park plan to the smaller drive-through at Yankee Candle, to our elementary schools, to our town halls, and we ha even have home delivery. But we have to figure out what we're going to do, and um, there's been some suggestion like the Sunderland Safety Complex uh, would be a good choice in the middle of winter if we have small batches, that kind of thing. So we're looking at different things. Um, the police department will evaluate every plan and every situation to see what the traffic capacity is and, you know, making sure people can exit and enter safely. So when so, you're talking about drive through you're talking about for flu vaccine, but not for testing for COVID? No, this is for COVID. Okay. The, what we do for the flu, what I, what I was trying to make clear is that the, what we get for f seasonal flu vaccine is a wonderful practice for our volunteers, right. but the plan that we choose or end up with is probably not going to be the same one that we get for the COVID rollout. So we need to be flexible. We need to have our volunteers um, ready, both medical and general. So um, Mary Lipinski is organizing from our um, long list of volunteers over the years. Um, if you want to volunteer and you haven't been called, please contact our Slugman's office um, and make sure you do that. What has been the biggest challenge in responding to this on a regional level? Has it been communication between towns? Has it been getting people to, to conform to the social distancing uh, guidelines that the CDC has put out? Well, communication in any event, any um, uh, crisis is usually a problem. And so the idea is to smooth out communication, make sure um, our how we decide to communicate up and down is clear. But I think also there just hasn't been, you know, real guidelines. So fortunately, Charlie Baker has been pushing out guidelines um, regularly, and we are um, very thankful for that. One of the things I think that a lot of people may be wondering is, when will life get back to normal? And I know that you can't answer that question yourself, but I know that you have some thoughts on, on how is this going to be a marathon, a sprint? Can we expect by summer to be back to normal somewhat? Uh, any, any ideas? And what do you hear from your friends on the state and regional level about this? Um, well, this is a long-term event. Uh, 1918 really ended in 1920. And I would say that this is a 19, uh, 2022 um, before it gets back to normal. And the reason I'm saying that is that um, we're just behind the eight ball. We don't have a lot of testing. Um, and this is because we're going to be impacted for a long time here. Um, businesses are not going to bounce back a lot. <clears throat> so it is really, really important that we do everything we can to protect the local economy and our local food chain. Um, I met yesterday with the Fr uh, Franklin Conservation District. Um, we have verified that um, farms, um, well, farms are in crisis because visas are not being, uh, different parts around the country are harvesting now. Visas are not being processed and some of the workers are being locked down in their own country. So there's just not people being able to pick the crops. So what we have to do as a community is make sure that our own 
food production in our own community is protected. So if you have a dollar to spend, spend it locally at our local businesses and our local farms. Um, we did verify yesterday that um, <clears throat> there is no minimum acreage for anybody to participate in um, the Farm Bill programs, and there is no minimum production level that you have to meet. This is really a wonderful thing. So all the programs in the Farm Bill are available, whether it's for high tunnels or energy or whatever. Again, if you, anybody is interested, call, uh, call into Slugman's office. I'll make sure they get in touch with our admin person. I mean, this is a volunteer thing, so it's a little hard to get in touch with us. But we can help you process the paperwork over the phone, and we'll get you into the system, the Fed system. Um, I think, what, again, what is really um, people need to understand that this is truly a long-term event, and um, we have to protect our businesses and our own people. So we have to do as much as we can. If you have questions, this is not a time to feel embarrassed. If, if you're stressed, um, we can provide food. Um, you know, we can call the senior center. Christina will get into it, 665-2141 but we'll, we'll get food to you um, if you need any other help. You know, this is a time to reach out and we are all in this together. We're gonna get through this. It's just, um, we need to protect our community as much as possible. Speaking of community protection, I wanna swing over to Zach Smith, the director of South County EMS, uh, for an update on how SCEMS is doing. Uh, the last time we spoke, there were some concerns about first responders and, and uh, whether or not first responders have been exposed to this virus. Where are, is SCEMS right now, and how are, how are you guys holding up during this time? Thanks, Chris. Uh, right now, uh, South County EMS, we are the normal staffing that we have traditionally. So still the uh, full-time employees, 24-7 paramedic level service with additional employees during the day. We are taking steps every single day to make sure that before anybody comes on duty that they don't have any sort of symptoms of COVID or the flu or any other sickness because that's just how we operate. We don't want to transfer something to people needlessly, right? So um, our crews come in, we take our temperatures, we uh, attest to the symptoms that we have or we don't have, and then we go into work. Uh, the other thing that we're doing too is you'll notice we are wearing uh, additional personal protective equipment, so masks primarily and sometimes even gowns, um, disposable gowns on all of the calls that we do at this point going forward. And that's gonna be until we're through uh, the other side of this. And the reason we're doing that is not because we think we are contagious or not because we think this person that we're seeing is contagious. It's that right now, we're not exactly sure what's happening um, or you know how fast this is being spread. So by taking those kind of more aggressive steps, that abundance of caution, it means that we can stay in the fight. The guidance right now from the CDC is that if anybody is exposed to a confirmed COVID case, that we're supposed to be out of work for two weeks, even if we don't have any sort of symptoms. Okay. So we're just trying to prevent decimating our staff just by people who aren't sick that have to leave for two weeks. So that's why we're wearing that additional PPE. We hear a lot of different symptoms of COVID-19. The, the latest has been, um, you, it was before it was temperatures, and it was cough and mm -hmm. shortness of breath. We've also heard of issues with lower GI uh, disturbances. Also, um, pink eye is the one, the most recent one that I've been reading about that that may be in it. I mean, how do you know if you have the symptoms of this and what do you do if you think you do? There, there's a lot about COVID that we don't know right now. It is a virus that attacks the lower respiratory symptom, um, system, so your lungs. So that's why we talk about cough and we talk about fever, because you, you have an infection. You mentioned those things. I've also heard um, loss of smell or taste or things. I, I would say to anybody who has any sort of feeling of unwell or unease to call their primary care. And, and I've said that before, and that's because they are the best people to kind of put your thoughts and your concerns in context with your health. So they might say, oh, that's clearly this, you are dehydrated or something, or they might say, oh, we don't know, and they might direct you to further testing. Um, because there's still a lot we don't know, we still say call your PCP if you have any sort of questions. And a presumptive positive is not necessarily a positive. And in, in fact, if, if you have symptoms, it's entirely possible you're not gonna get a test. 
Correct. So it's it's important to you know if you think you may have COVID or the flu, don't take any chances. With it. Right. I, and and we've talked about this the lack of testing. There's a couple reasons <laughs> why you want to test as many people as possible. One of them is from a public health standpoint. So we can track, we can see the numbers, we know what additional measures we need to take. And the other one is from a treatment standpoint. So if you are admitted to a hospital, they wanna know whether you have COVID so they know, you know what wing of the hospital to put you on. That said, if you have mild, uh, even to moderate flu-like symptoms and you're not going to be hospitalized, you, you right, you might get from your doctor that we're not going to test you because we don't have the test for it, but really, even if we tested you, the direction would still be the same, which would be to stay home and get better and then call us if you need us. So that's why you might see presumptive cases. Those are individuals that might have symptoms or based on their travels are at a higher level of suspicion for it, but just haven't been tested. And it doesn't mean that they have it or don't have it. And it doesn't mean that they're going to be very sick or not sick. Further complicating this, of course, is that we're going into spring allergy season. So someone who may have a runny nose because of allergies may not necessarily have COVID-19, but you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's a moving target. You never know. Yeah, and, and that's why we're talking about social distancing, because a lot of this is we don't know. And there's more and more guidance as well as with any sort of infection that you could potentially transmit it even when you don't have symptoms, just by the nature of how biology works. And that's why we say now's the time to stay home, limit your interactions with others because we're not exactly sure of these things. Maybe it is just allergies, but if it isn't, we want to make sure that we're not needlessly giving um, something that could hurt somebody else to somebody. We're going to talk to Christina Johnson in a minute from the, uh, the Senior Center, but one final question, and you can both answer this as public safety guys. We, we cannot forget that the people we're sending out there to help people are human beings as well. And I'm always concerned about the human element and the human impact of this thing on the first responders. How is morale holding up among your people? Are they freaked out? Are they handling it in stride? And what can be done to support them in this time? I, if I'll start, I, I think I, from a medical standpoint, you know, this, from what we hear in the news, this is potentially much scarier than things that we've dealt with in the past, looking at the fatality rates and things like that. But this is the type of thing that we are used to handling. So while maybe the consequences might be higher, we are used to disinfecting, we are used to wearing personal protective equipment, and we're used to taking steps to protect ourselves. I think right now the stress is in the lack of personal protective equipment. And we are at South County in a very good place right now because of the donations that we've been receiving from community members and organizations that have those things to donate. Uh, there are other responders throughout the country that don't have access to personal protective equipment, and I think that that is primarily where the stress is coming from, that we know how to protect ourselves, and it's through social distancing and PPE, and if we can't distance because we got to go to work and we don't have the PPE, then, then what do we do? John? Yeah, I'm always trying to monitor my people, Chris, you know, 365 days a year, COVID comes into play, but for me, it's just standard management where people have a home life and then they have a professional life. And you want to make sure that they create a delicate balance between the two and make sure that they're good with both. So when something like this rolls out, it's not in a huge additional stress on them. Where I see the stressor is when my wife comes home from work every day because you know she's right in the midst of it up at the hospital. And I think that if you talk to the medical staff in those facilities, there's a, a much greater level of stress than there is currently with the first responder groups. And you know, I think it does surround absolutely, you know, the chief is correct with PPE. It surrounds you know, uh, the heartbreak for patients where sometimes you do everything you can and the outcome is just not what you want it to be. So from a Deerfield Police perspective, I'm always monitoring our people. That includes after a major call, it includes even after a minor incident, and it could be something with a child involved, and I know that officer has a child, so COVID doesn't change anything I do. I'm constantly watching them. Yeah. We certainly, in the community, we appreciate the efforts of, I mean, you guys are true heroes, as are any other frontline medical workers. This disease is insidious on a number of levels in the fact that the people who are most likely to be seriously harmed by it are people with compromised immune systems and seniors. And which is one of the reasons why we, every one of these updates we do, we talk about 
how to help seniors. And we're bringing on today as a special guest, Christina Johnson from the South County Senior Center. Uh, John's been doing a good job of updating us in the last couple of, uh, of these reports on what the, what the efforts are underway to help local seniors. Christina, what is the center? I know you guys are closed, but you're, you still have people there. You're still, yeah. you're still mm -hmm. open for business in the yes. sense that uh, by phone. So what kinds of things are you working on at the Senior Center to help support local seniors? Yeah, we're actually, we're quite busy at the Senior Center. for. So yes, we are officially closed, but um, as I keep telling people that say to me, oh, you must be able to relax at work nowadays. I'm like, no, it's busier. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> but um, so we're doing a few different things um, and we continuously look at what else we can do. Um, so we're, we're, we're still staffed at the same amount that we were staffed when we were open and having programming and everything. Um, the, the big thing that we're doing um, is we are um, distributing food from Life Path, um, sort, either through our, what we call our drive-through system, which I'll explain in a second, or to people that are homebound or you know, cannot, cannot come out for whatever reason. And obviously we're not encouraging people to come out um, if they have any concerns. So we're also delivering meals um, to additional people. And this is, um, we service Sunderland, Waitley, and Deerfield, so those three communities. I also wanna mention that, just while you're talking about that, uh, FCAT, we are gonna be posting, and we are posting the menus good, on our bulletin good, board. So good. if you wanna know what the daily menu is, we left that slide up a little bit longer so people can actually see it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, and, and there's our, there are specific processes to order these meals, correct? Right. Um, I mean, we do the best we can for people that, st you know, kind of just show up. But ideally, we'd like for the count for how much we're ordering for the next day, we would like, so, you know, for Monday, for example, we put in an order for amount of meals this morning, Friday morning. So, yes, we would appreciate if you know that you're you're interested in a meal on a given day that you call us um, like 24 hours a, ahead at least. Um, but again, we do what we can. We always order a little extra because we know things happen. What kind of numbers are you serving from through this program? Um, Is well, it a lot, a little. How many? Well, for us, it, it, it's um, quite a lot. It, it was about 40 today. Um, and when we would just have our normal, you know, congregate meals at the center, um, we would usually average about 20. So it, it's doubled. Um, I'd say about 30 of those people, if you're using the number 40, are coming by to pick it up, and then another 10, at, you know, and that number's increasing too, but another, at least another 10 we're delivering to, and we have some volunteers that we... Um, started this week as that number's going up for delivery. Um, but I, I just, you know, if anyone's concerned, of course, about, you know, coming out and picking up these meals, um, well, A, we can either deliver it, but also, um, it, we, we, you know, we're in protective gear, you know, we have the mask, the, um, the gloves, um, it's just one of us that you'll be interacting with and it's very quick that we're, you know, <laughs> handing you your bag of food through your window. Um, it, it, oftentimes someone will, it will be, you know, their passenger side or the back, so we're still, you know, decreasing the amount of contact we have. And then at, when we're delivering food, we, um, we call when we're in the driveway or to let you know the person know we're there, but we actually leave it you know at a designated place that they have requested. So again, there's no con there's not contact. Um, so that's the main thing we're doing, and, and and we encourage yes you know people to call that um, that are looking for um, you know it's good food, and we're we're offering it Monday through Friday. Um, we're also, and, and so that food's from Life Path, but I also wanted to add with that is we're p packaging um, a breakfast for the next morning, and that's coming from uh, Frontier Regional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the Frontier Regional program. Yeah. How's that going? So that's, yeah, that's great too. Um, so we're actually every day giving you two meals when you come by. Um, so it, I'm getting, you know, a lot of people are happy with that. They're um, complimentary. It's great. It's, it's, it's good food and um, seems to be the right amount. So, um, so that's the main thing that we've been undertaking. Um, the, uh, the other um, component I especially focus on is, is the outreach and calling out to people and, you know, making those calls, especially the people that are not involved in the meals. 
um, and you know, and checking, do you have everything do you, you need? Are you able to you know, get prescriptions? And, and this becomes more and more of a big deal, obviously, as time goes on, because now you are running into, oh, I need a prescription, or I need this, or I only had food for two weeks, and now it's a month. And um, so again, we're either, we are doing some um, errands for people right now. As the, if that number does get larger, which I suspect it will, we'll have to um, again pull in some more volunteers because you know there's only three of us that actually um, are employees at the senior center. But right now we're, we're um, helping out in that respect too. If someone needs a prescription, we'll pick it up and bring it to you. I've been reading online too. Uh, uh, John's mom has mm -hmm. been very involved with helping. Uh, organized purchase of gift certificates mm -hmm. to places like Cheslick's Market yep. for people. And I know that that's been a big help as well. Yes, yep, I, yep. We helped distribute some of those to some of the seniors. So, yes, they were all very pleased to get, with the, you know, to receive those. So, yes, things like that are great. And then it's also obviously helping the business. So, Are you getting calls from people who are just freaked out by this thing that are like hey, not so much freaked out but we definitely get calls just loneliness yeah. and and boredom um and you know they just they just want to be out doing something so um yeah many of our calls um you know are just because someone wants to chat they want to have some contact with somebody so um and that's you know and we're here we're here for anybody that wants to do that you know if you feel like you just need to call and feel like you're part of the world again you know we're there so and that number again for anybody who doesn't have it already is it's, what? um six six five two one four one we really appreciate the work you're doing oh, over there and, thank and you. we're going to continue to to promote your efforts and uh and talk about what the great program is going on in, in benefiting our seniors in the area. And again, the, the South County Senior Center uh, serves seniors in Deerfield, Sundle, and Inway. So Correct. anybody who's watching mm -hmm. on any of the combined channels, uh, be aware of that. It's not just the Deerfield place, it's for the entire uh, area. Yes, uh, Carol, you. I wanted to ask you uh, before we close here, a couple of things. Uh, I know you guys, the select board, took a vote recently regarding scheduling of the election and of town meeting. Just update us on that. Um, well, the uh, town meeting now is set for uh, June 1st, and the election is June 8th. Um, I, I, that's the best information we have at the moment as far as possibility what will have happen. Um, obviously, we're, we're going to try to do it. You know, we're not going to have significantly more testing. I, I mean, I would hope we have, but who knows what's what is really going to happen so we, it, we would be setting up say like out in the football field at frontier um bring your own lawn chair kind of thing so it will be outdoors like well right. hopefully okay and before it, and during the day because um you know you don't want to get into the mosquitoes so <laughs> don't, don't open the mosquito door <laughs> just yet i know that that's a but, that, you know what that's a big concern though because you've got West Nile, Tripoli, still right. out there. So, so you're still going out with... Epidemiological right. double whammy there, too. So the, the thing is, again, um, we're going to play it by ear, and we'll make adjustments as, as um, things happen. I think what's most important is people have to know that whatever establishments are open, we're doing compliance checks every day, and everybody's being visited, and... Um, Everyone is cooperating to this point. Everyone has been wonderful. We have log books for cleaning, and that seems to help. Um, we are trying to make everything safe. As Christina said, the senior center is closed, just like the town hall is closed. Um, our workers are making a commitment. Our highway people, our, all our workers, are making a commitment to keep their physical distancing and, uh, and social contacts to a minimum outside of work. They come into work to a, you know, we're sanitizing the town hall, to, you know, twice a week and their offices are safe. We're trying to keep essential government working with minimal interruption and our employees are showing up and, and stepped up to the plate and doing everything possible to make that happen and that's really important and that's why it is important that people no matter how bored you are or you know cr going crazy figure out something because guess what we really need you to stay home overwhelmingly this is being spread by aerosol you can still get touch on surfaces and then touch your face there's no question about that but 
overwhelmingly it's aerosol. And the aerosol can be in suspended in the air for at least three hours, and some reports are for multiple time, you know, longer time than that. But it's just the normal breathing. And that's why the physical distance, social distance is not, social distancing is a misnomer. We want people to talk to each other on the form, phone. We want people to communicate. But we want you physically to stay away so you're not breathing in each other's um, breath. And it, because it doesn't need to be a sneeze, it doesn't need to be a cough, it can just be regular breathing. What about local parks? I know some communities have restricted access to local parks, things like jungle gyms, that kind of thing. Well, the jungle gym issue is, is because you're touching multiple people, right. you're touching the surfaces. And kids, no matter how you try to teach them better, they're still going to touch their faces. So the idea is really not to go to public parks. You know, trying to stay out in nature, to stay separate, say, stay separate from each other, not, not interact. You can, if, if you have, if your family unit or you have a, a group, you know, another household that has been really religious about doing this and, and being careful, and then you, you're taking classes, you know, working, having kids do classes together and stuff, it's okay. But it needs to be consistent in the sense that you are truly not exposing your unit to anybody else. And um, we got to figure this out. And this is just how we're the new normal until um, we get enough people that have had the virus that they can come back on um, and work and, and start opening up um, our economy again. But we need to have widespread testing to show that you have immunity. There, there is no question you're going to have some short-term immunity. We're not sure about this virus for how long, but if you've had it, then you can go back to work. But we have to have tests to show that you've actually had it and that you wouldn't inadvertently be spreading it to somebody. And that's why it's so important. And the numbers are scary. If 50% of the United States gets infected, and 20% of those are hospitalized, and you only have a 1% fatality rate. The numbers are overwhelming. And it's, you know, that's why this is so important. We have to do this. And it will take a while to get back to normal, but that doesn't mean it's going to be as bad as it is today. We'll have more information, we'll have more testing, we'll have more people that have been exposed who can get out and work. So we will be opening up, but this is a long-term event. And to say that we're going to be back to where we were in January, um, is, it's going to be a two-year process. And um, we just need to face up to it and pull together as a community. We can make it. Don't be afraid to reach out to us. We are here for you. Good thought to end on. Carolyn mm -hmm. Shores Ness, Deerfield Select Board and Board of Health, John Pachorek, Deerfield Police Chief, Zach Smith is the director of South County EMS and Christina Johnson uh, from the South County Senior Center. My name is Chris Collins. That's been our FCAT special report, the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll be back in a few days with another update. Thanks for watching. In the meantime, take care of yourself and each other.